September 21st, 1952, a girl was born in a remote town of Germany. She grew up like a typical happy child. She had friends, family, she went to school, got good grades, and she was a devout Christian because she belonged to a strict Catholic family. Things went fine until the age of 16 when she suffered from her first episode of seizure, which was later diagnosed to be temporal lobe epilepsy. One thing led to another, and she began to hear voices, and she was later diagnosed with major depression. This is the story of Annalise Michel, who is a well-known case of demonic possession. Annalise was taken to different doctors, including psychiatrists, psychologists, and certain neurologists, and was prescribed with some medications like gambuterol. However, the medications did not respond to the way they are supposed to, and her condition kept getting worse and worse. She began to show some bizarre behavior, like eating insects, and hitting herself and hitting others. She became intolerant towards religious objects and places. She began to believe that she was possessed. She believed that she was possessed by six different demons, including Lucifer. She changed her demeanor, her voice, her personality, and she began to speak different languages. Upon seeing this, her parents also believed that this indeed is the case of demonic possession. Therefore, the local priests were contacted and the request for exorcism was made. The priests contacted the local church because in the Catholic religion, you need the church approval for exorcism. The church approved the exorcism because the church believed that this indeed is the case of demonic possession because the girl did meet certain criteria for exorcism. And there began one of the most famous exorcisms of the modern history. This exorcism lasted for the next nine months with total 67 rites of exorcism in such a short period of nine months. Many of those sessions were recorded and they are still available online. Because the exorcism continued, the parents believed that she does not need medical attention anymore. Therefore, they stopped the medical treatment. Because of that, gradually, Annalise kept getting worse and worse. And eventually, she passed away at the age of 23. The cause of the death was dehydration and malnutrition. This story was depicted in the famous movie, The Exorcism of Emily Rose. So what happened to Annalise? Was it demonic possession or was it something else? Let's vote. How many of you believe that it was the case of demonic possession? Please raise your hands. And how many of you believe it was something else? Please raise your hands. Thank you. The argument in the favor of demonic possession will be refuted if there is a medical illness in which the patient behaves exactly the same way as Annalise did. And guess what? There is one. The Diagnostic Statistical Manual, DSM-5, by the American Psychiatric Association, describes this condition as 
Dissociative Identity Disorder, DID, previously known as Multiple Personality Disorder. According to the DSM, DID is the disruption of identity characterized by two or more distinct personality states that could be described or confused in some cultures as demonic possession. As you can see on the slide, there are other features of this disease described by the DSM. So what is the cause of DID? What happens in the brain of these patients? What are the risk factors? Many neuroscientists today believe that the cause of DID is severe childhood trauma, such as physical abuse, sexual abuse, and extreme neglect. There is another group of scientists that believes that no, trauma is not the cause. The cause is something else. They believe that the cause is iatrogenic. That means it is physician-induced. And I do know that there is another group of scientists that believe that DID is not a disease at all, but we are talking about the majority of the scientific community, the DSM, and the American Psychiatric Association. DID is associated with various psychiatric illnesses, such as major depression, generalized anxiety disorder, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, and substance use disorder. I mean, you can name it. What happens in the brain of these patients? In the olden days, the technology was not that advanced so that we could look at the brain structure. But now, we have magnetic resonance imaging, MRI. And we have two kinds of MRIs, structural MRIs and the functional MRIs. With the help of the structural MRI, we can see the structure of the brain, and with the functional MRI, we can look at the functionality of the brain, the activity of the brain. And we have both kinds of studies on DID patients. A study was published in the American Journal of Psychiatry on female DID patients. It showed that DID patients had reduced hippocampus and the amygdala region of the brain. There was 19.2% reduction in the hippocampal region and 31.6% reduction in the amygdala region of the brain. The hippocampal region is associated with long-term memory and the amygdala is associated with emotions. This possibly explains that why many DID patients forget one personality while they are under the influence of another personality or why they have dissociative amnesia. And this also explains possibly why they can be overly aggressive. However, this study had its own limitations. For example, the sample size was small. There were only 15 patients. And these patients were taking some psychiatric medications. And certain psychiatric medications had the tendency to reduce the size of hippocampus and amygdala. So let's see if there are some other studies with DID patients. There are functional MRI studies. A study showed that there is a reduction in the blood flow in the orbitofrontal cortex region of the brain. And this orbitofrontal cortex region of the brain, this is associated with decision making. That's why neuroscientists believe that because it is associated with decision making, this possibly explains why many DID patients have a tendency to lose control on impulse. They have lack of control on the impulse. Another study showed increased activity in certain regions of the brain. This study was also a functional MRI study, and this showed that there is an increased activity in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex region of the brain. 
the lateral anterior prefrontal cortex region of the brain and the parietal region of the brain. There are many studies, and the time does not permit us to go into the details of all of these studies. Therefore, I will, I will just discuss some interesting cases of DID. A very interesting case was published in 2015 of a German woman who lost her vision at age 20. She had DID with over 10 personalities, and she remained blind for the next 13 years until during one of her psychotherapy sessions, one of her personalities began to see. As the psychotherapy continued, more of her personalities began to see as well. And by the way, this blindness was not fake blindness. This was confirmed on the electrophysiological studies. Another famous or an interesting case was discussed by the famous motivational speaker Tony Robbins in one of his books where he talks about a DID patient with two personalities. One had diabetes, the other personality did not. And the personality that had diabetes, his blood, his blood glucose level used to, uh, used to shoot up under the influence of that personality. And when the other personality took over, the blood glucose level went down. There are other cases such as patient changing eye colors with personalities and eye prescription with personalities. Another interesting case was of the patient, Timmy, who had allergy of orange juice. And when he drank orange juice, his body developed hives. And when the other personality took over, his, his hives disappeared. I myself have observed a very interesting case of DID, where this disease was confined to just one limb. This patient had DID in one of his limbs, and he believed that it was demonically possessed. He had no control over it, and this hand and this, this arm used to hit him himself. He used to hit himself so bad that his face got deformed. He was diagnosed with DID because he met the criteria for DID diagnosis. We have gone too far from the times of Annalise now. We did not have that kind of technology then, but now we have the technology and we have the answers to so many questions. We don't have a permanent cure yet. The only mode of treatment we have is psychotherapy. However, we believe that in the future we will be able to find a permanent cure. However, one thing is for sure, that this is a scientific phenomenon. In the end, I would like to say that when something is scientific, we should consider it as scientific. When something is natural, we should believe it to be natural, rather than believing it to be supernatural or paranormal. And why is this important? This is important because imagine if we know a DID patient and we believe that he is demonically possessed, do you think we will spend time with him or most of us will run away from him. They are human beings. They need our love, our support, our affection and empathy. If trauma is really the cause of DID, then by isolating them, judging them and labeling them as demonically possessed, are we helping them or are we aggravating the trauma? Now I am addressing the DID patients directly. DID is a mental illness, just like any other mental illness, like major depression, generalized anxiety disorder, schizophrenia. And mental illnesses are the illnesses of the brain, just like any other organ just like the disease of any other organ, like heart diseases, like kidney diseases. We have brain diseases. We can live with it. And we can fight it. I myself, when I was a kid, I had attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD. I had severe difficulty in focusing, in reading, in studies, 
And I didn't know what to do. Gradually, I started learning about ADHD. I educated myself. I listened to the experts, the scientists. I followed the suggestions and the advice. I did the focus training. I did whatever I could to beat it. And here I am today. And I believe if I can beat a mental illness, anyone can beat any mental illness. So don't let this mental illness stop you from achieving your goals. Don't let this mental illness stop you from living the life of your dream. Together, we all can fight it and beat it. Because if we do so, we will be able to solve this problem. Because this really is a problem, and every problem has a solution.